What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Terry here. Welcome to Motoflix. Thank you guys for um, tuning in. Uh, this series is called Making It in Motorsports and it's all about me getting around and interviewing uh, a series of different professional uh, motorsports drivers and getting tips and tricks on how to make it in motorsports and, and how to get to a professional level. Uh, so this episode we interviewed Fanger Dan. Now if you guys don't know who Fanger Dan is, get on YouTube, search him up. He's got a, a long list uh, of, uh, of championships that he's competed in and, and, and a few that he's won. And um, yeah, he's, he's like one of, one of the best drifters in, in New Zealand, I believe. Uh, so he uh, provides a lot of information on um, building a brand and you know how he made it to where he is and like the trials and tribulations on how he got there. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So here it is. Hey guys, I'm Fang and Dan here, and I drive the two Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D Mustangs at D1NZ. Uh, I've run two D1NZ championships, and I'm 35 years old. How did I first get into motorsport? Um, obviously, um, a, a group of friends. Um, we started a group called uh, Rock Corp, and it was just some, just a whole lot of mates just getting out there, going to open days, uh, getting off the streets, you know. Um, uh, back in 2002, 2003, uh, there was uh, some events called um, Nizam Days that used to happen at Pukekohe uh, once a month and, and we just started building some cars, we had a workshop and just getting out there having fun, you know, um, it was just a good bunch of guys. Bills and Techniques uh, took a, you know, obviously watching a lot of Japanese uh, Initial D uh, videos. Um, you know, and there was a lot of stuff you could buy for a missing chassis to uh, to get out there and start having some fun. You know, um, you know, getting into the. You know, it took a while to actually even come into having like hydraulic handbrakes and and bits and pieces like that, and getting more and more lock. And um, you know, it just mainly was just seat time. You know, throwing the car out of control, and and you know also. We couldn't afford to buy brand new tyres when we first started out. You know, we had old half-worn tyres that we'd picked up from a tyre shop that was saving half-worn tyres for us, you know. And um, But it was all about getting out and having fun. Uh, it, it started off as a quite a cheap sport and grew into, you know, a uh, real professional level uh, motorsport around the globe and is still, I think, the fastest growing motorsport in the world. Um, Man, it's, sponsorship's a really, really hard one. Um, I couldn't imagine trying to get into um, a motorsport thing these days. Um, I, I would understand it would be quite hard, um, but um, I think personalising yourself, you know, like um, I was very lucky, I was just, you know, I was a fanger, you know, like I just banged the cars, you know, and next minute I got a nickname, you know, and, and having that nickname, definitely started a, a good vibe, you know, or, you know, like a, um, it was something that related to, to me and to people when they were talking about things, you know. Um, uh, I always go on the, uh, I like to be different, you know, like I could have, I could have keep uh, building Nissans or whatever to keep trying to win championships and stuff like that, but I wanted to bring new cars to our series, you know, so um, there was years I, went, I built a Nissan Laurel, then I built an S15, and then, then I was like, okay, well, what's next for me, you know? Um, then I built a Holden Commodore and, and, and won, won a championship in that, and um, built another Commodore. And now I've gone and built two new Mustangs, and also built a Ford Falcon as a rides vehicle. You know, so I want to keep bringing out new things, and, and I think that separates me different from everyone else, you know, because when you are searching for sponsorship, if you're going into a, a, a business um, to, um, you know, put your proposal down, um, you've got to think that they're most probably seeing, you know, a hundred of these, especially if you're focused on a certain market, you know, and 
if you're not different, you're not going to stand out from anyone else. So that's a key thing. I, for me, um, I keep trying to bring new things. I, every year I go back and see, visit my sponsors. I'm always really excited about the next thing that I want to be involved with or the next project or what's, what's in the pipeline, whether it's another event that we want to try and get to or a demo or, um, yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, being well presented, you know, if you've got a different vehicle, um, you're going to stand out. If it's well presented, you're going to stand out even more and personalise it to suit you as a person. Yeah. So. Biggest hurdles? Um, obviously, um, I wouldn't say there's been any big hurdles. Um, it's more about... Um, the only hurdles would be bringing out a new car and, and having the teething problems and there's, there's been that little bit of frustration where, you know, like especially if you've come out of doing so well out of something and then you sort of put yourself back a little bit and you know you can do it but you've got all these little teething problems that, that, that put you back, you know. Um, that's the only real hurdles you ever sort of come across. Um, I haven't had any big crashes or anything like that. Um, one thing that um, you sort of got to, I wouldn't say practice to crash, but um, in drifting you've got to you've got to prepare yourself for worst case scenario. And um, I've had a lot of close calls, um, but I've luckily been able to um, quick reaction and either um, for one time. Most probably my worst crash was uh, in the wet at Pukekohe. I was come barreling down there, couldn't even see where I was going. And um, all of a sudden, um, sitting in the street, the the the, um, the rain stream, you know, from the car in front of me, and um, he just hit the brakes because the yellow flag came out because someone else had um, spun out or come off the track around the corner, and and um, instant reaction was, you know, or well, like as soon as I lifted off the throttle, I just aquaplane, and um, I was like, there's only one way out of this, and. Um, pitched the car in more angle and uh, made sure my wheels were turning the right way and held my foot flat until it um, didn't break. I just kept my foot flat down, um, pointed the wheels where I wanted to go, the steering, and um, the arse end just crushed the car right up to the um, back windscreen um, on the sweeper. And um, it was coming around to hit the wall with the front which would have really totaled the car um, but luckily I just held the steering wheel actually the opposite way to normal drift I actually wound it that way and luckily I did that because as the come, front come in it actually just about touched the wall and then dragged back dragged back up to the track and I had my foot flat down so um, just quick reactions um, have really saved me from you know like I used to be pretty crazy back in my younger days and and really push my limits and put myself into a few of those positions before and and always come off pretty good, you know, like yeah, it, it, it smoked the back of the car, but it didn't bend the front and wreck all the steering or the radiator and you know like within an hour or something we'd we'd um, we'd pulled the rear of the car out and, and we were back out racing. Um, thing with drifting as well is you actually don't have a lot of bad crashes like you're always trying to get really close to the wall you're really trying to get close to your um, your, um, your your battle your, um, yeah. yeah and you know you're, you're both doing exactly the same thing pretty much you know and and if he cooks it too much um, you've got to think at what point is he gonna is he gonna hold on to this or is he gonna save it and those are some split decisions you have to make right in that position but most of the time you can tell he's he's gone and as long as you go with them, you most probably won't even hit them. Yeah. It's when you try and like, oh nah, you know, just because you are not going to spin, doesn't mean that you shouldn't spin with them. So it, it is a split decision that you have to make because he might have some really wild steering and you think, oh he's spun out, I don't want to hit him, and next minute he backs it in and pulls away from you. So there are moments like that where you're like, okay, nah, he's gone. Yeah, and you just swim with them and you won't even hit each other. Uh, worst case scenario, if he does spin, be prepared to um, punch him in the door <laughs> um, or something like that. But we don't have a lot of damage.
Um, I think um, when you watch um, circuit racing and stuff like that, they all pull up into a corner and they all come out with bent bonnets and the boot lids are all pushed up and they've nose to tailed each other and we don't have any of that, you know, like, you know, there's not really a lot of damage in drifting. So, so yeah, there are, there's been a lot more um, rememberable moments like winning at a track that you've never won at. You know, a track that's challenged you, you know, that your whole career. And for me, that's um, been Manfield, my most exciting track to drive on, because it throws something at you every time. And I'd never won it there. I had plenty of seconds and stuff like that. And um, a couple of years back, I actually won, a, won my first round there. And that was most probably more rewarding than winning the championship, you know, just winning that one round. So um, there's that, you know, there's the two Mad Mike, um, you know, the drift, Red Bull drift shifters. Um, you know, for the two ones that happened in New Zealand, we, we podiumed at both of those. Um, I've had, um, I've won some events in, uh, in Singapore, uh, sorry, uh, in Asia, Kuala Lumpur, and also finished third in a um, Formula Drift round in Singapore. So, I've had a lot of highlights, they're all been rememberable moments. Um, and that's one thing about drifting as well is that sometimes you might come to an event like this and you might not go home with a, with a trophy or something like that but if you have a real killer battle out there and um, people walk away and they like come up to you after it and they're like man that battle should have been the finals and it might have been your top 16 battle it might have been your top 8 battle it's for me it's about making those rememberable moments for the crowd and um, you know representing my brand Boom! There it is. That was Fang and Dan with some juicy information. Now make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and hit that bell for all of the latest updates. Peace out.